Hey everybody, this is Rishi, and in this video, I'm gonna be reacting to some TV radiologists from the show Scrubs. This was one of my favorite shows when I was going through medical school, but I have never really looked at it from the perspective of a radiologist. So it's gonna be interesting to see how accurate it really is. All right. You're on your own. Elliot's on Lucky Street continued with the head of the radiology department. Dr. Moyer, uh, you told me my patient had colitis and it turns out it was just traveler's diarrhea. So? That sounds like good news. Yeah, he took it as bad news, maybe because of the unnecessary colonoscope I shoved three feet up his pooper. What do you want me to do? Uh, ap apologize to my patient and tell him it was your mistake, no big deal? Think I'm gonna pass on that one. See, I got you pegged as one of those spineless types that's not gonna cause me any trouble no matter what I do. So thanks for stopping by, and don't forget your car door. I just don't want to get stolen, okay? That was me not caring. <laughs> okay, <laughs> that's a really funny clip. Um, let, let's start with the technical kind of medical aspects of it. So she said that the patient had traveler's diarrhea and he made the diagnosis of colitis. Traveler's diarrhea is just an infection of the intestines that you get from eating contaminated food. And usually it happens when people are on vacation. And so that's why it's called traveler's diarrhea. And he made the diagnosis of colitis, which is an inflammation of the large bowel, the colon. And if you add that suffix itis onto most parts of the body, then it just means inflammation of that part of the body. So pneumonitis is inflammation of the lung and uh, gastritis is inflammation of the stomach. So colitis is inflammation of the colon and you can get that from a couple different things, one of which is an infection. So I feel like he actually made the right diagnosis here. And really, for traveler's diarrhea, you don't really need imaging to make that diagnosis. All you have to do is put together the signs and symptoms in the patient's history and physical, and uh, you can usually make that diagnosis pretty easily when they tell you that they had uh, a history of recent travel. The second part of that clip was that she asked him to apologize for the mistake, and that is actually pretty accurate. So uh, there's a push in radiology and in medicine in general for doctors to start apologizing for the mistakes that they may make when they treat a patient. And it's not super widespread, uh, but it is a movement that is gaining some traction. So that was actually pretty accurate. And this is an old clip, so kudos to them. Look, I know you're the only x-ray tech on tonight, all right? But I just need a quick abdominal scan to make sure Mrs. Farr doesn't have an obstruction. Uh-uh-uh. Don't want to know who they are. Don't want to know how they're doing. Just want to go click, click, and get them out of here. Now, your lady's about 40 people down on the list. And as always, uh, there are no cutsies. Yep. Look, uh, there's got to be something I can do. See, because of the way I laid on top of you, I can tell people this is an x-ray of Siamese twins. How cool is that? It's so cool, laddie. Let's never talk to anyone about it ever. Oh. Okay. That that's really funny. Um, so first of all, so that was that was the X-ray tech or the rad tech, and uh, he wanted JD wanted to get his patient a a CT scan. Usually for a big hospital like this, and I suspect it's a big hospital because there's a bunch of residents and multiple different subspecialties, you're going to have more than one x-ray tech. And not only that, but usually the x-ray techs are going to have uh, their own specialty. So the people who are doing x-rays or radiographs are going to be different from the people who are doing CTs, and they're going to be different who, from the people doing MRIs and fluoro, et cetera. So you're you, usually at a hospital like this, there's more than one x-ray tech and they do their own subspecialty. Okay, um, second thing, he said no cutsies. That's true, but it's also kind of not true. Usually if you have a patient who is in urgent need of a scan, which I'm not sure if this patient was or not, then you can make things happen in a hospital, okay? So there's different levels of urgency for patients, and if a patient is really urgent, then you can always get that patient in, um, even if they're f far down the line, far down the queue. Ow. 
Unfortunately, that's when we ran into a brick wall. I'm head of the radiology department. You call me in from home to do an abdominal CAT scan that could wait until Monday morning. Well, guess what? It's not happening. Look, Dr. Moyer. These are my machines! Sir. My machines! Whose machines? My machines! How is that helpful? They're mine! Mine! My machines! My machines! My machines! My machines! Okay. Uh, that I, I really like that clip for a couple of things. One, let's t talk about like the technical aspects. He's, he's talking about my machines. It's probably not the case that they're his machines. Uh, the hospital usually owns the machines, unless he worked out some kind of deal with his practice and the hospital where he leases the space and he owns the machines. That's possible. But in most hospitals like this, the hospital is going to own the machines. Um, but also what's really funny is he comes in from home wearing his bathrobe just to tell these guys that he's not doing the abdominal CT scan. That's, <laughs> that doesn't happen. Okay. Um, number one, we talked about the rad techs being there all the time, basically in a, in a big hospital. So it's the rad techs who actually obtain the images and, you know, quote, take the pictures, not the radiologist. And it's the radiologist who then interpret the images. Um, but second, if he were not going to do the study, why is he coming in from home just to tell them that? That doesn't make any sense. But what I think is the most funny thing about this is just how bad the reputation of radiologist is. Um, you know, these, these shows have medical consultants on them. And so I'm sure that something like this has happened to that medical consultant who works on this show, um, which is really bad because, you know, today radiologists are, uh, in my opinion, very helpful people. They use, I mean, for me, I am really happy when uh, a clinician comes into the reading room to talk about their patient. But there was something called the golden age of radiology, which I'm sort of fuzzy about, but a lot of older radiologists talk about it. It's like was during the 80s and 90s and the amount of work was a lot less. And I suspect that some of that bad reputation that radiologists have today is due to the radiologists from the quote golden age of radiology. But um, yeah, super funny clip. Dr. Moore, you're gonna give Mrs. Farr the abdominal cat scan and I'll tell you why. You remember that colon patient of mine that you screwed up on? I'm going to tell him exactly whose fault that was, and then I'm going to spend every waking second helping him figure out how to physically and financially bitch slap you, even if the end result is that we both get our asses fired. Your move, Chuckles. Bring her down. Hell yeah. Hell yeah. Okay, that's, that's not how it works. Okay, um, that, that makes for a good story, but that's not how it works. Um, but one thing that is true about what she said is that uh, radiologists get sued quite a bit. So um, radiologists are the target of uh, a lot of medical malpractice lawsuits, and that was totally, totally accurate. So that's legit. All in all though, I give Scrubs a pretty high rating for medical accuracy, not when it comes to like the very small details, but when it comes to like the larger issues that arise in medicine, I think Scrubs is actually pretty accurate when it comes to that. Anyway, this was really fun to do. Uh, if you have any clips of TV show or movie radiologists and you want to get my take, let me know and I'll take a look. Thanks.